Welcome to From the Quarries. We've covered a few weighty topics over the last few months, so I thought tonight was a chance for a bit of levity, and let's have a look at a few Masonic jokes. Now it turns out, after exhaustive research, that there really aren't all that many Masonic jokes out there at least those that are fit for publication on YouTube. And those that do exist are a bit like Toast to the Visitors. They tend to be regularly recycled and reused. So in that spirit of recycling, welcome to Masonic Jokes. I'm always keen to hear more, so if you know of any good jokes that you think I may have missed, please leave them in the comments. Good evening. And welcome to tonight's presentation, From the Quarries, an archive of Masonic lore. Let's start with the old classic. Just how many Freemasons does it take to change a light bulb? It turns out there are three answers. It's a secret. Three, one to screw it in, one to read the minutes of the previous light bulb replacement, and one to sit on the sidelines and complain that this wasn't the way they used to screw in light bulbs. 20, two to complain the light doesn't work, one, to pass the problem either to another committee, the Masonic Council or the Master of the Lodge. Three, to do a study on lighting in the Lodge. Two, to check out the type of lights that the Rotarians use. Three, to argue about it. Five, to plan the fundraising dinner to raise money for the bulb. Two, to complain, that's not the way we did it before. One, to borrow a ladder, donate the bulb and install it and one to order the brass memorial plate and have it inscribed. A chap went for an interview for a job. Knowing that his new boss was a prominent mason, he decided to use his position as a newly raised master mason to see if it would help him get the job. Off he went with masonic ring, cufflinks and a tie to the interview. He stood erect, took three steps forward to shake hands, and shook hands in a very special way with his prospective boss. All through the interview, he dropped into the conversation as many references to masonry as he could possibly think of. And at the end, the boss said, so if I offer you this position, what do you expect as a package? The chap thought his luck was on and he said, oh, $350,000 per annum and six weeks holiday. To which the boss replied, we will have it and you begin. Have you heard about the lodge that was holding its meetings in the ballroom of a local hotel while its building was undergoing renovations? One night, a travelling salesman asked the desk clerk who all those men were going into the room. The desk clerk replied, Oh, those are the Masons. The salesman said, Oh, I've always wanted to join the lodge. Do you think they'd let me in? Oh no, said the clerk. They're awfully exclusive. Why, you see that poor guy standing outside the door with a sword? He's been knocking for six months and they still won't let him in. While visiting a newly initiated brother at home one day, his wife took me to one side and said her husband had started behaving very strangely since joining. I inquired, in what way? She said, He locks himself in the bathroom for hours on end mumbling to himself with his his little blue book. As the evening proceeded, I turned the talk to the lodge and asked him how he was getting on. Oh fine, was his reply. I asked him about his behaviour and was there anything wrong? No, was his reply. So why read the book there? Well, he said, it's the only tiled room in the house. A little before the lodge is about to open, an old man totters up to the tiler and says, I'm here to receive my second degree. Well, they all look at this guy who really is incredibly old and they ask him to explain. 
I was entered on the 4th of July 1922, and now I'm ready for my second degree. So they go scurrying off for the records and look back through the books, and sure enough, there wasn't his name, entered on the 4th of July 1922. Where have you been all these years? What took you so long to be ready for your second, they ask. He replies, I was learning to subdue my passions. A candidate for initiation was to be picked up and driven to the lodge, but before this could happen, the car he was in broke down. The candidate said there was no great distance involved, so he'd go on his bicycle. So he got on his bike and he rode up, and just when he reached the top of the hill, his chain broke. As the lodge was at the bottom of the hill, and all he needed was a back pedal brake, he repaired the chain with a bit of cord he had in his pocket, and freewheeled downhill to the lodge. Later that evening, in reply to the toast in his honour, he said how proud he was to be a Freemason, but could not understand, as he had told no one, how the worshipful master knew he had come on his own free wheel and accord. There's a man walking down the street at one o'clock in the morning, and he's very drunk. A policeman stops him and asks, where are you going in that condition? The man says, I'm on my way to a lecture on Freemasonry, officer. The policeman says, where can you possibly get a lecture on Freemasonry at this time of night? The man replies, from my wife when I get home. Pat and Bill had been Lodge brothers for many years. They had promised each other long ago that the first to go to the Grand Lodge above would return to tell the other whether there really were lodges in heaven and what they were like. By and by, it came to pass that Bill went first. One day, shortly after, Pat was working in his garden when he heard a whispered voice. Psst! Pat! He looked around but saw nothing. A few moments later, he heard now quite clearly. Pat! It's me! Bill! Bill! Pat exclaimed. Are you in heaven? Indeed I am, said Bill. Pat paused for a while to get over the shock, and then said, Well, Bill, are there lodges up there in heaven? There certainly are, Pat. There are lodges all over, and they are quite magnificent, equal or better to Grand Lodge. The meetings are well attended. The ritual is word perfect. The festive board is fantastic, and the spirit of Masonic Fellowship is all pervasive. My goodness, Bill, said Pat. It certainly sounds very impressive, but for all that, you seem rather sad. Tell me, old friend, what is the matter? Well, Pat, you are right. I have some good news and some bad news. Okay, what's the good news? The good news is that we're doing a third this coming Wednesday. Great, said Pat. What's the bad news then? You're the senior deacon. Some few years back, just after the introduction of random breath testing, the police officers of a small country town had to show the community that the DUI task force was working. They decided to stake out the local Masonic Hall. Then, as the night wore on, eventually a Mason slowly came down the stairs and got into his car. The moment he started the engine, the two officers approached him and asked him to blow in the bag. He did, of course, but to the amazement of the officers, it proved negative. Fearing a faulty bag, they tried again, with the same results. Sure of a possible conviction, they then escorted him to the police station to do a blood test, which also proved negative. Being upset with this, they then asked him what had gone on and what he had done that evening, to which he answered, the Grand Master was there, the Grand Secretary was there, the Grand Stewards were there, and we all had a great time. As to my job, I was the Grand Decoy. A Mason was having trouble with his ritual and was telling a fellow Mason in a pub one day. And his friend said, I know a man down the road who sells parrots who know the ritual and they'll prompt you when you have any trouble. So the next day, off he went to the shop and, and the man said, 
Yes, I have three. And he pulled a curtain across and there were three parrots. One with a master mason apron on, one with a master's apron, and one with a grand lodge apron. So he said, how much is the one with the master's apron? $2,000. And he knows all the ritual, including the inner workings, and will always prompt you when you get stuck. No, that's too expensive. What about the master mason? Well, that one's $1,000. And he knows all the ritual, but not the inner workings. But he will always prompt you when you're learning it. No, still too much. What about the one with the Grand Lodge apron on? Ah, oh, you can have him for $10. Why so cheap? He must know all the ritual and the inner workings. Oh yes, he knows all the ritual. But when you make a mistake, all he does is sit there and goes, Tut, tut, tut. A mason is on a business trip. One day he comes to a small village somewhere in the north of England. Our brother is curious to know whether there is a Masonic Lodge or not. So he takes a walk through the village and after some time he finds a path called Mason's Road. Thinking that the path might lead to the Masonic Temple, he follows it. At the end of the pathway he sees a building which looks somewhat rotten and seems to have been out of use for quite a while. Our brother tries to open the door and surprisingly, it is not locked. He goes inside and finds dust and spider webs everywhere. In the front of the door, there sits a skeleton wearing an apron, a collar, and holding a sword in its hand. Oh my God, thinks our brother, and it is the lodge room. In puzzlement, he sees skeletons with collars and aprons everywhere. The worshipful master, the wardens, the organist, deacons, all skeletons. He looks around and goes to the seats of the secretary and treasurer. Under the hand of the treasurer, he finds a small piece of paper, a little note, which he seems to have passed to the secretary. So a brother picks up the note, blows away the dust and reads, If nobody prompts the worshipful master, we will sit here forever. The worshipful master of our lodge found a bottle with a genie in it. In accordance with custom, the genie offered to grant him a wish. Okay, said the worshipful master. I've always wanted to go to Hawaii, but I hate to fly. So my wish is for you to build a bridge so I can drive to Hawaii. I can't do that, exclaimed the genie. Don't you know that's impossible? No genie could do that. It's too far. The water is too deep. It's just totally beyond anybody's power. You'll have to make another wish. Okay, said the master. I wish that at our next stated meeting, all the old past masters would just get along and not cause any trouble, not have to tell us how they did it in their day, not complain about the ritual, and not put down the current officers. Just sit on the sidelines and behave. Hmm, said the genie. Do you want that bridge with two lanes or four? A tired old mason whose hair was grey came to the gates of heaven one day. When asked what on earth he had done the most, he said he had replied to the visitor's toast. St. Peter said as he told the bell, Come inside, my brother, you've had enough of hell. Some definitions. Worshipful Master, leaps tall buildings in a single bound, is more powerful than a speeding locomotive, is faster than a speeding bullet, walks on water, gives policy to God. Senior Warden, leaps short buildings with a single bound, is more powerful than a locomotive, is just as fast as a speeding bullet, walks on water if the sea is calm, and talks with God. Junior Warden leaps short buildings with a running start and a favourable wind, is almost as powerful as a locomotive, is faster than a speeding air gun pellet, walks on the water of a swimming pool, talks with God if special dispensation is given. Senior Deacon barely clears a garden hut, 
loses a tug of war with a train, can fire a speeding bullet, swims well, is occasionally addressed by God. Junior Deacon makes high marks on the wall when trying to leap buildings, is run over by trains, can sometimes handle a gun without inflicting self-injury, doggy paddles, and talks with the animals. Tyler runs into buildings, recognises trains two out of three times, is not issued ammunition, can stay afloat with a life vest, and talks to walls. Steward falls over doorsteps when trying to enter buildings, says, look at the choo-choos, wets himself with a water pistol, plays in mud puddles and mumbles to himself. Secretary lifts buildings and walks under them, kicks trains off the track, catches speeding bullets in his mouth and eats them, freezes water with a single glance. He is God. And let's finish up with a quick knock-knock joke. Knock-knock. Who's there? The District Deputy Grandmaster. You answer the door after only two knocks. I'm taking your charter. <laughs> For more Masonic podcasts, videos, music, texts and artwork, visit fromthequarries.com or subscribe to our YouTube, Twitter and Facebook accounts by searching From the Quarries. <laughs>